anything is possible. And then the big dominant male, who's the one that actually made all of these kills, is that individual over there. Now, he's lying next to a lodge. We're right in the middle of a lodge at the moment, and that's one of the special things about the Sabi Sands, is that we've got these relaxed individual leopards that will move into lodges and will take sort of over and are not too perturbed by what goes on. So you can see there is a tire there and that's from the lodge itself and so he's lying just behind there watching the two youngsters go about their business and it's a strange, strange situation and a very unique one in that generally leopards are solitary cats and you'll find a situation where young male leopards generally are pushed out by big dominant males and so to have a male leopard like this that is completely relaxed and is allowing these two young males to be in his territory and to be in his area and to feed right next to him is absolutely unbelievable and completely unique. It's not something that we're going to see every single day and it's not something that we are going to witness very often. Liaza, leopards are territorial and that's what makes this sighting so unique is that the big dominant male off to our left is allowing these two young males who are at the process of, well the one is in the process of, of leaving his mother so his mom is slowly but surely leaving him for longer periods of time which is that individual up in the top there and so he's just starting his process of now becoming this individual that goes out and starts to set up a territory. The other young male which is the one male that is down on the ground he he unfortunately lost his mother in, a, in March of this year and we don't know what happened to her she just disappeared and he was basically orphaned at about a year old since then he's gone about just trying to, to make his way in life and so both of these young individuals are not territorial at the moment and that's why the big dominant male that's lying off to the side is tolerating them at, at the moment he knows that these are both his offspring so he mated with both the females that were that produced these two youngsters and he knows that they're not really a threat because of their size they're still small individuals and so that's why he's not threatened by them at the moment but it is weird because generally they are solitary generally they are territorial and they should start pushing um each other away now chassis you asking if they are related so yes this male as far as we know has mated with both the mothers of these two younger males and so it means that basically these are both his offspring we're not 100 percent sure obviously because females can mate with multiple different males during their easter cycle and to ter determine paternity is sometimes very very difficult without doing um, dna testing but as far as we know he mated with both the mothers and they would then produce cubs within the time frame of him him mating with them and so basically you've got a situation that they're related from the, the father's side and then in terms of the mothers, the mother of this individual that we're watching now is the grandmother of the one that is up in the tree. So that is how the kind of bloodline works. So they are all somehow connected and... So Emily, I haven't s s chatted about what animals they hunt and we've just been discussing the family dynamics but basically with these guys is that they will tend to go after small to medium sized antelope but they have a very 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 wide array of food items that they like to go after so you'll find leopards will hunt anything from small insects like termites all the way up to large mammals like baby elephants baby giraffe so they have a very broad spectrum but most of what they hunt here in this particular part of the world is small to medium sized antelope and what they're feeding on right now is what's called an impala now an impala is a medium sized antelope for us it's similar to a deer in the United States or in other parts of the world. That's about the size of what, of what we see them going after mostly. And so there's the leg of that particular antelope. And this will be all that's left. And you can see this particular male is just trying to get comfortable on the branch itself. He's quite a character, this youngster. He's all over the place. So Sadiqa, a leopard's lifespan, it depends if we're looking at males or females. So males tend to have a slightly shorter lifespan because of the rough nature of their life where they've got to protect territory, they've got to push other males away, they've got to fight for territories. They tend to live for between 12 and 14 years. That's a rough sort of lifespan for a male, whereas the females will often go up towards 16, 17 years of age because they're not having to deal with as much and patrol as much territory and try and fight and keep their territory territories from younger males. They tend to not have as, as many trials and tribulations and that allows them to then sometimes grow and, and live a little bit longer. But it's not always the case. Obviously there's situations where individuals will disappear and, and you'll find males living longer and females living shorter. <laughs> 